Hi, my name is Kendra Cunningham. I chose to do my presentation over the short story called Richard of York Gave Battle in Vain by Danielle Evans, which was published in The Best American Short Stories 2017. A really quick and basic summary of the story is that Rena is friends with a man named JT who is due to marry the pastor's daughter. Rena and JT had met after being quarantined in an African hotel room, and years later, Dory invites Rena to the wedding, still suspicious that something had happened between Rena and JT, when in reality, nothing did. On the night of their bachelorette party, Rena hooks up with one of the groomsmen and afterwards continues to relive the trauma of her sister's nearly fatal shooting, which has left Rena's sister in rehab. That same night, JT decides to run away from the wedding. The next morning, Rena and Dory go looking for him, and over the car ride, they connect and become friends and decide to go to a water park after they can't find JT. Later that day, JT texts to say that the wedding is back on. However, Dory decides not to get back with him, and the two women go back to their day at the water park. I first wanted to look at the story from a formalistic approach. The beginning opens with the biblical story of Noah's Ark, how God created the rainbow after flooding the earth as a sign and promise he wouldn't do it again. This idea is what leads us to the present day events, as Dory, the bride, decided to celebrate this story in her wedding, making each of the bridesmaids wear a different color of the rainbow. This also ties the story's name, as Richard of York gave battle in vain, is a mnemonic device for memorizing the order of the colors of the rainbow. I believe that the ending is tied to the beginning in a subtle way. In the end, after Dory chooses friendship instead of her toxic relationship, Rena reminisces of her childhood. The narrator states, Rena floats and thinks of the last time she did this, which must have been 20 years ago. Must have been with her family, when this was the kind of day trip they would have all found relaxing. When Rena would not have looked at the water and thought of E. coli, of Havana virus, or imminent drought, of a recent story of a child who drowned in the pool, when it was still her job to keep Elizabeth's swimmies on, when there was still Elizabeth laughs, when there was still seas to be crossed, when the whole world was in front of her. Wish you were here, wish you were here wish you were here. The last passage is supposed to showcase how Rena has finally learned to deal with and not run from her troubled past. The cliched postcard phrase of wish you were here takes on this symbolism. Although Elizabeth is not physically here, she is in spirit and will always be present in memories. I believe the beginning and the endings of the story are tied together through a message that every successful and conquering thing we do in life has a story behind it of heartache and grit that got us to where we are today. God now lets us see rainbows to show we survived and are pardoned. Dory was able to leave behind a relationship that gained a new friendship, and Rena is able to overcome her fears and trauma that her sister's injuries caused in order to have a prosperous and happy life. So for the psychological approach, I wanted to take a deeper look at how Rena's trauma from her sister's injuries had affected Rena personally. In the story, it described how Rena's sister was shot in the head by her new husband out of suspicion that she was cheating on him. This left her with life-altering injuries, and I think that the event had damaged Rena by keeping herself from um, opening up and trusting in relationships, both romantic relationships and friendships. Um, The story said, quote, All her adult life, people have asked Rena why she goes to such dangerous places, and she has always wanted to ask them where the safe place is. The danger is in chemicals and airports and refugee camps and war zones and regions known for sex tourism. The danger also sometimes took the trash out for them. The danger came over for movie night and brought them a popcorn maker for Christmas. The danger hugged her mother and shook her father's hand. I loved this particular passage in the story because it showed a deeper side of Rena. To me, this passage says that although there are dangers in traveling and doing quote-unquote crazy things, you can see that there are dangers in anything if you look hard enough. And subconsciously, I believe that Rena is attempting to block out this pain of her sister suffering from someone she loved by not permitting herself to love and develop close relationships with others. While her sister is not dead, she won't ever be the same person again, and that thought haunts Rena day to day. Rena has a hard time connecting with others out of fear that this connection will ultimately hurt her in some way. She puts up walls to block herself off from other people, whether that be a physical hurt like her sister was harmed or a mental abuse. 
So the last topic that I wanted to discuss was that of the gender criticism in the story. Specifically, I wanted to examine the relationship between the characters of Rena and Dory. Um, and I think that they were portrayed in the beginning as the antithesis of one another. Rena was described as this hardcore photojournalist who went around the world documenting violence and oppression that was taking place within harsh conditions. Um, and this was ultimately how she met JT, who is the fiancé of Dory, um, when they were stranded in a hotel in West Africa for several days um, because of this quarantine. Um, and during this um, period, she was described as, quote, she had built the kind of life that belonged to her and her alone, one she could pick up and take with her as needed, unattached, untethered, and unbothered. And I think that this quote describes Rena as being damaged and almost cold-hearted because she severed her ties with people in, that she cares about. Um, and I think that she also is the kind of woman that just does whatever she wants to do in life. She doesn't let other people tell her what she wants to do. Um, she just goes out and does it. Dory, on the other hand, is this seemingly sweet woman who's a preschool teacher and pastor's daughter. Dory seems to have stayed in her place and minded her own business for most of her life. She waited for over 10 years to marry JT, who ended up leaving her on the night before their wedding. For most of her life, it seemed like she was just told what to do and when to do it. At her bachelorette party, she tried to put off this image that she was drinking and having a good time and letting loose, when in reality, she was just drinking ginger ale out of a champagne flute. Towards the end of the night, she started taking care of her inebriated friends, which is where the following paragraph was taken from. Quote, because she is the prettiest of all her friends, Rena assumed she was the group's ringleader, but now she can see that's not true. Dory is the caretaker. This quote provided excellent characterization of Dory as she has seemed to take care of others and not steps out of how she's supposed to act. When you compare that description to that of Rena's, they are complete opposites. Dory waits around for what she needs to do next, whereas Rena seems to go out and take what she wants. Overall, their personalities are of what a woman is supposed to be like um, provokes conflict between the two characters. And another reason for conflict was initially Dory wasn't sure of the relationship between Rena and JT. She's suspicious that something might have happened while they were in quarantine, but she also doesn't want to just step up and ask. However, in the end, the conflict between these two is resolved when Dory realizes Rena is not trying to get with her fiancé, and the two ended up bonding over their shared heartbreaks. Dory was kind of heartbroken over her lost marriage, and Rena over her lost sister. Another thing that I wanted to discuss regarding the gender criticism is the relationship between Dory and JT. I believe that in their relationship, there was a lot of insecurity going on. When he finally jipped out of their wedding the night before, I believe that this broke all the trust that Dory had in him. And at the very end of the story, when JT texts Dory that the wedding is back on, the narrator writes, quote, He has come back to the place where whatever his decision is, it always stands. I think that this is a very deep line that takes a lot of time to process, and to me, it says that the person who cares the least in the relationship, which in this case was JT, ultimately has the most power and control, and when Dory decides to stand her ground and not run back to JT, she's taking back this level of control in her life and will no longer be pushed around. Overall, I think there are a couple of lessons I walked away with after finishing this short story. The first and most apparent one that I leave with is that friendship can mend wounds if you put in enough effort and open yourself up to feeling, connecting, and growing with others. The second theme that I found within the story was that the little things in life should not be taken so seriously. Yes, bad things happen, but we have to be able to learn from them and become better from our experiences because life continues to move forward and so should we.